Uh, I'm Max Hamburger, and I'm going to introduce you uh, Dr. Joseph Grisanti, who uh, I'm very proud is a, a good friend, but uh, also an outstanding speaker. Uh, Joe and I, and a number of others, Larry Edwards, uh, Alan Epstein, and others had an opportunity to meet several times over this past year to look at gout and look at content in gout and try to put together a lecture that would be very much at the rheumatology level. And so um, we're going to hear from Joe talk about the spectrum of gout and hyperuricemia, acute attacks to chronic refractory gout. Joe, thank you very much. Thank you. What a day this has been. I, uh, every year, David McLean and Pam McLean, they, they pound out the best rheumatology conference in the country just quietly, and, and it, I'm always amazed at how it's so great, even greater year after year. So David, my, my hat's off to you, thank you. I, I also feel a little bit like, uh, like Elizabeth Taylor's eighth husband on their honeymoon. And while I know why I'm here and what I'm supposed to do, I just pray I can make it interesting for you after such a great day. Okay. This is an independent CME program. You have to sign up for it outside. In order to get CME for this program, you have to fill out your evaluation, which is part of that brochure which you'll receive outside. And you have to return it to the people at the desk out in front of this room. So do not drop your CME evaluation uh, into the collection with a regular meeting, uh, or you won't get credit for it. Um, this is designated for one uh, credit. And again, that, that, that evaluation form is, is critical. I will notify you if I speak of anything off-label. These are the faculty's uh, conflict of interest disclosures. My objectives for this presentation, and uh, let's get right to it. Now, I, I speak of gout as it is the most, in, the most common cause of an inflammatory arthritis in men over the age of 40, uh, affecting 8.3 million people in the United States, representing approximately 4% of the population. And one out of five people in the United States have hyperuricemia. This is uh, the suggestion that gout is on the rise, uh, strangely perhaps because of the high concentration of high fructose corn syrup in our diets, but hyperuricemia is almost twice as high now as it was 20 years ago. Now, in men over the age of 80, about 9% of that population uh, have uh, gout. About 70% 70, 70 of patients with hyperuricemia are asymptomatic, and there's a higher incidence of gouty arthritis and hyperuricemia in the African-American population that is believed to be related to hypertension. Now, regarding the pathophysiology of gout, I thought that I would start with the mitochondria. And the reason why I do is because if you are a member of the animal kingdom and you utilize oxygen for the synthesis of ATP, that you in the process of that utilization generate hypoxanthine and xanthines, which ultimately lead to the production of uric acid. And so whether you are, you know, an insect or a reptile or a fish or a bird or a mammal, that pathway or an aerobic bacteria, that pathway in fact applies, that the entire animal kingdom generates uric acid via this pathway. Now, it is interesting to me that most of the animal kingdom, the story doesn't end with uric acid, but there is another enzyme called uricase that converts the poorly water-soluble urate into the highly water-soluble allantoin. 